Thank you, Reverend Howard. Our speaker today is one that is moving along on her path, and she's getting noticed throughout the world. Reverend Jeannie. Thank you. Hopefully the right kind of notice. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so hello everyone. Hello. Um, I'd like to speak on a subject that's very familiar to you. I'd like to speak about peace of mind. I know in this group this is something that we spend a lot of time, a lot of attention with, but hopefully I can give you some new insights or some new ways of looking at it. So peace of mind is that important to us? Yes. yes. It is, it is. Because peace of mind leads to peace of heart. And peace of heart leads to feeling oneness, feeling connected. And so peace of mind is very precious to us. It's in our window, peace I am still. That affirmation guides us as we move through everything that we do. But to be honest, is there anyone here who's always peaceful? <laughs> Raise your hand if you're always peaceful, 24-7. <laughs> so the fact is, is that it's a very fluid thing. There are times that we're peaceful and times that we're not peaceful and times we're a little peaceful or, or very little peace. So it's a very fluid thing. And, and I think that that's important to understand because I think sometimes we get into this illusion of thinking that we have to be perfect. So, you know, maybe you have some model and you say, oh, this person's always peaceful. You know, Reverend Howard mentioned the other day Mother Teresa is one of the great examples. And she, I think she wrote a, an autobiography and she admitted to the tremendous lack of peace that she felt and the tremendous amount of doubt. And so the moral of the story is, is anybody can experience these moments that are unpeaceful. And this is not a flaw in you or in your spiritual path. This is part of the spiritual path, is that in order to experience deeper peace, Sometimes we have to experience more unpeace coming up and coming out. And the whole idea is to simply observe it. I say, wow, that was an unpeaceful thought. <laughs> I was very unkind when I just thought about that person walking down the street. <laughs> that little chatter, wow, that person's so X, Y, Z, or this one's so that. And all of these things that go on, this is part of the human experience. But our job is not to be attached to these, so that these thoughts can float in, float through, float out. And the truth is, maybe they weren't even your thoughts. How do you know that they were your thoughts? When you get one of these like random judgments or you know, opinions, likes and dislikes really strongly, you know, we don't know where maybe we were walking through a field and that was in the energy field and we just happened to be a host for that thought. So there's something really powerful about realizing that maybe it isn't your thought. Maybe you just took it on for a bit, and that's okay, because you can also send it on. You can let it go. And that's one of the ways that we can resume peace of mind. So for example, like, you know, thinking about some of our heroes, you know, like Oscar Schindler, I don't know if you know, he was the one who saved over a thousand Jews during the, during the time of the Holocaust. And his first reaction was, oh, I should have done more. You know, like he was overwhelmed by this sense of guilt that he didn't do enough. You know what I mean? And so, you know, this is what happens to people who have, here's this beautiful heart that he had, and he knew that it was possible to do more, but there's no point in the torment of that because he did what he did. And the same is for us. We have moments where we're not peaceful, and we have thoughts that, you know, really are not spiritual, there's no point in being ashamed of that. We can just simply say, okay, I can see that, and I'm not going to stick with it. I'm not going to dwell on it. So the whole point is that on the journey of peace, we're going to experience moments that are not peaceful, and that is the journey. You know, if we expect that we're supposed to be the kind of person that never has any of these low thoughts or whatever, we're going to just feel tormented and not... Uh, not like we're being successful in the process. But instead, if we could take the attitude, okay, here's some stuff coming up, coming up to be cleaned and released, and send it out, off, back into the universe, back to the source, transmuted as pure energy. And even we could be grateful for a moment of unpeace. Does that make sense? Yeah, does that seem useful? 
So let's talk a little bit about what are some of the main causes. Here we are, these beautiful, peaceful beings. We are dedicated to peace, and yet we have these experiences of unpeace. What causes us to be unpeaceful? What are some of the causes? Yes. It could be many things. It could be like conditions that we see in the world today. Absolutely. Like the earthquake in Indonesia. Absolutely. That makes you unpeaceful. Absolutely. Absolutely. There are many opportunities that present ourselves that are where we see unpeace in the world. All you have to do is turn on the news and you're going to see some unpeace, right? And so some people say, oh, I'm a spiritual person. I'm not going to watch the news. Well, that's your choice. You know, do whatever is right for you. But we don't have to be like that. We can say, you know what, there is unpeace in the world. And yesterday, actually, Reverend David in his class, we had the mediumship class yesterday, and he left us with a very beautiful thought. And that is, is that as we go into this very peaceful state and the state of humility, that we can offer that up to the world. And I find that very powerful because suddenly peace is not just a personal issue. Do you know what I mean? It's not just for you. When you experience peace, the universe changes. Maybe you see it, maybe you don't. But just the mere fact of being aware of that earthquake, sending them some love, supporting them on their journey home, whatever it is that they need, can be a great gift for you and for them. So we don't, as spiritual people, we don't have to avoid unpeace. We just need to learn how to work with it as alchemists. So alchemists of energy, meaning that we take energy and we transmute it and help it in its journey. And that's part of the process of peace. So the process of having a, a, a peaceful mind is good for you, it's good for your animals, it's good for all the people around you, but it's bigger than that. It's bigger than that. So every time you experience peace, you are an alchemist of energy. I love that. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? You know what I mean? It's not just for us. So when we come together in this chapel and we have a moment of peace, in some way the tree that's outside is affected and the birds are affected and the butterflies are affected and the dogs in the neighborhood, who knows? We may not see them. But we trust, we know that this work is not just personal. And what the world needs now is not only love, sweet love, but peace, <laughs> sweet peace. And we are the instruments of that. And it's important to know that we don't have to be perfect in that process, that we can be on our journey just like we're all on our journey. I'm on my journey, you're on your journey. None of us are perfect <coughs> at peace, but we're perfectly on the journey of peace, which includes our moments of unpeace. So yes, we can, as, as Dorothy mentioned, we can have external things that take us out of peace. We can have internal things that take us out of peace. Thoughts, you know, random thoughts, judgments, likes, dislikes, strong emotions. All of these things can send us out into a spin. And that's okay because all of that <coughs> is stuff to be processed and cleaned and, and offered up to the universe. So what we're looking for is an experience of witnessing when we have a moment of non-peace, we want to be like the witness. The same way you would be towards a young child who you know, had a moment of tantrum or something like this. You don't have to freak out or punish the child. You can just simply observe it. And this is one of the foundations of the healing work that I do with animals, is that we are in a process of observation. Kind of like that story that Ray Jesse told me about meeting a uh, a very <coughs> barky wild dog on the street, right, yes. <laughs> is that she didn't need to go into the fear about it. She could just witness it and be present for that dog. And she said, show me where your home is or where's your yes. home. And the dog led her back to the home and back to the very frightened owners who were afraid well, where was the stare, where was their dog, right? So yes. just by being peaceful, you can transform an experience for the dog, for the owners, for you, and now for all of us and sharing with that story. So peace is our power, it is our grace, it is our birthright, and we're going to lose it all the time. That's the reality of the life on this earth experience, is that we're going to have moments where we're in peace and moments where we're at war. At war with ourselves through resistance, through judgment, through trauma, through events. It just is what is. 
but as metaphysicians, we're able to just move into that neutral place of observation. Oh, there's some unpeace in me, in her, in him, and whoever, in that part of the world. Yes, yes. We don't have to be blind to it. We can be part of the process of peace, part of the solution. So I wanted to just invite you to think about that, because one of the things that uh, can take us out of peace is, is this attachment or thinking or resistance or you know, it could be anything. It could be like I know David mentioned about this. I just recently won an award, and in, in that four-hour cycle of that, I was so excited that I couldn't be peaceful. You know, waiting, anticipating, waiting for them to announce us. You know, it was like this, and I just, I just couldn't be present. And I said to myself, I said to myself, "You're not present." And I said, "Yes, I know," <laughs> but I couldn't do anything about it. I couldn't. I finally just had to settle for just breathing occasionally. You know, that was as good as I could get. You know, but. It was just the excitement level was too high to go into that equilibrium, and that's okay. I, it was a wonderful experience for me on so many levels because it helped me understand animals, that when animals get too excited, it's, I, I can't help them with peace until I can bring them down to a level where they can hear, right? And so it was really good for me to see that for myself. It was a beautiful learning experience. So. I just want to give you one little quote from the Dalai Lama. He said, there are only two days in the year that nothing can be done. One is called yesterday, and the other is called tomorrow. So all the rest is now. And now is this beautiful portal of peace. Because if we can be here now, we can begin to experience peace. So we're going to do that together, just for a moment. We're going to deliberately choose to move into the now. So leaving behind everything before, leaving behind everything after, it's just the beautiful power of now. And there are many ways to do it, and any way you do it is a good way. But we're going to do it a little bit differently if you would play along with me. We're going to do it the way we work with the animals. So one of the things that we do is we don't look at the animal but we use our eyes, our laser focus, to focus on a very specific point. So we're going to be eyes open, and it's just whatever is it. Take your eyes just down a little bit so your eyes are in a slightly downward gaze, and look at one point that's right easily in front of you. Do not move your body. You're going to be as still as a statue. Do not move your eyes even the tiniest millimeter. Hold that visual focus with the affirmation I can be peaceful now. So holding that eye position, giving yourself that message, I can be peaceful now. And I'll leave you there for about 15 seconds. And now just relax and be normal in your body. So maybe you could feel that, maybe you didn't, but this is one of the ways that we work with animals, is that we introduce a peaceful field which invites them in. And they begin to resonate with our peacefulness. So as we do it in a group, it's very powerful because that peace magnifies. And so this is a very beautiful way to start your day. And if you have some method you prefer doing, do it any way you like. But I'm offering this one up because it's very interesting neurologically when we hold the eyes in a very specific focus and don't let them move. And at first it might seem a little bit effortful for you, but you'll find is that it's very difficult to think about yesterday or tomorrow when your eyes are absolutely still. And again, we're not going to ever stare at an animal with that because that would be a different message. We're looking at a point slightly low and on the ground. And this holds our focus. So perhaps you could feel the change in the room as we do that, as we unify our energies. Instead of having sort of that random movement of thought, as we all are doing the same thing, it creates a coherence in the field. And this, you know, in my training, you know, in the light work training that I did for nine years, this is a lot of what we did, is we learned how to work in group formation 
where we focused our energy, and this is what we do on Saturday mornings, I think. You know, we, we take a single point of focus, and we're all focusing on a similar thing. Now, of course, we're all going to have different experiences. That's natural. But there's a certain coherence that happens when we choose to focus in one way. So lovely. Let's see if there's anything else I wanted to say about that. So when we're in a peaceful state, I would say that we're in the present moment. So that present moment is tremendously powerful because from that peacefulness, we can hear our intuition. This is one of the things we've been working on. If you'd like to join us for Wednesdays at noon, we have an intuition class and we put a lot of uh, time spending on refining this process of how we get into the present moment. So I hope you'll join me for one Wednesday. You can drop in anytime, Wednesdays at noon. And I'll just leave you with one quote from Eckhart Tolle. Because often it's the emotions that take us out of this peaceful state. And we are moving towards the ability to have an equilibrium or a neutrality or an acceptance of all that we experience. So here's what Eckhart Tolle says. He says, All emotions are modifications of one primordial, undifferentiated emotion that has its origin in the loss of awareness of who you are. So we're in, we're in the grip of an emotion. We're often misconnected to who we are. So when one goes the other way and takes a moment to get present, one has the opportunity to remember who we are. And I'll leave that with you. Thank you.